Hello, welcome to today's lesson. My name is Wes. In case this is your first time here, the channel is Interactive English, and the channel's all about trying to help you practice and improve your, your grammar, your pronunciation, vocabulary, just anything related to learning English. And today, uh, I have, it's a, it's a pronunciation lesson, and we're gonna be doing, it's a little bit of a pronunciation quiz, but really, I'm going to talk about um, quite a few different parts of pronunciation. And I know I've titled it, uh, an, it's an American pronunciation lesson for intermediate to advanced learners. I am from the United States. I would say that I have more of a standard American accent. I've lived all over the U.S. And some of the things that I'm going to talk to you today uh, about in this lesson are really related to well, would be more my accent, um, the way I pronounce different words and phrases, and I will get into that in just a little bit. And I do think the, the things that we're gonna be going over would be more for intermediate to advanced learners, even though I think even beginner learners would be able to follow along and kind of understand the different ideas because I'm not gonna be talking about any real advanced vocabulary or anything like that. So I do want to give uh, a couple shout outs to those of you who are with me. Great to see so many familiar names. Hello, uh, Lolly, good to be back. Sleepwalker, Leo, Hiwa, uh, Ten Kritika, Oleg, uh, Shweta, Kokon, how are you? Moonroy, uh, great to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I will give some more shout outs as I go through the lesson. I know I've had a little bit I think it's been a little bit of a live stream uh, hiatus for a little bit, so it's good to be back. And I just want to begin with, the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna walk you through some different questions and to give you a chance to participate, uh, I'll ask you guys to answer the questions. Let, let's see what you already know, and then I'll tell you the answer and talk a little bit about it. So let's begin with our first, uh, the first question that I have for you related to pronunciation is what is the most common sound in English? And I've given you, you, if you're with me right now, you could just type in A, B, C, or D. The symbols that I'm giving you right here, this is the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA. Some of you may be familiar with the IPA, others of you may not be. That's okay, don't worry about it. If you're not sure um, what it is, the IPA, I said it right there, it's an alphabet developed in the 19th century to accurately represent the pronunciation of languages. So it's not just used in English, um, but I think if you are, perhaps you're using an online English dictionary and you look up a word and you see the pronunciation of that word, they may give you these symbols and that is the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA. So many of you, <laughs> let me just go ahead and tell you, yes, uh, excellent, Lali, Oleg Shweta, Yasmin, Sleepwalker. Let's learn uh, and practice English. Um, Goshnil, all right, Takayo, good to see you, hello. Uh, Angela, Samuel, hello. The correct answer is B. And I'll go through and say, I, w I meant to say these sounds for you, um, but I think if I said the sound, it would make it a little too easy. So A, that is a, a the symbol for a ch, ch sound. B, that is the schwa sound. That is the answer. That's the most common sound. And it sounds more like an uh. Um, C, even though it's an I, it's more of a long E sound. E, like in uh, sheep. And D is just the consonant S sound, like snake. And of course, B, that is the most common sound in English. And that leads me to this right here. It is the schwa sound. This is definitely a sound that you should become familiar with because you are going to find the schwa sound in so many different words. And what the schwa is, it is an unstressed vowel sound. So I've given you two examples right here, just random words that I chose, um, banana. And I, I right here, if you're looking at the IPA, those symbols, you can see that it's like an upside down E. That is the schwa. So in the word banana, three syllables, the schwa is in the first 
and the second syllable. So you see it twice, uh, that sound twice in there. Banana, or even the word we talked about, the International Phonetic Alphabet, alphabet. All right, that second syllable has that schwa sound. You see that upside down E. And the reason I said that if you don't know the symbols, that's okay. This is definitely a symbol that I think it's, it's useful to know. Because when you, if you look up a word, you want to know the meaning, often these online dictionaries will give you the pronunciation and they'll, they'll show you the IPA. It's useful to know. The other thing I would say that's related to like, I, like the English accent, I think all English accents, but in particular in the United States, is that I think people will use the schwa and reduce words all the time. For example, if you just want to, one way to kind of just improve your fluency, sound a little more natural, think of the word to. I'm going, um, I'm going to the mall, all right? It's a simple sentence. And instead of pronouncing it to, overwhelmingly in the United States, people will pronounce it that schwa sound, t. So instead of saying to, say t. It's a very soft sound. I'm going to the mall. All right, so I hope you li listen for it when I say it. You can repeat after me if you want. I'm going to the mall. And you hear that schwa. And obviously to is a very common preposition, but that's just a simple way to, to improve your fluency, speak a little more naturally, say that schwa, Instead of saying to, I'm going to the mall, I'm going to the mall. I'm going to the park. I'm going to the doctor. All right. I hope that you can hear that when I, that t when I'm saying the word to. So that I think is useful. And I think it's very common in places like the United States. Again, that's where I'm from. That's my, uh, the English accent that you are hearing right now. And I want to say quickly, speaking of uh, speaking naturally, I wanted to let you know if you guys, if you are interested in practicing your speaking, uh, I have enrollment is now open for my speaking course, which is called Speak Up. You, the classes are going to begin uh, the first week of May. So you have until May 2nd to sign up. Here's just a little information about it. The whole the course is really to help you speak confidently, build your confidence, speak clearly, speak naturally. It's a 10 week course, enrollment's open. Classes are 60 minutes along. You get, you'll speak with me as well as other classmates. And we do the lessons through Zoom. That's the platform, it's free to use. Uh, the price, uh, some of you I know have asked about that. It's uh, 179, you can use the voucher code SPEAK10 to get a 10% discount. And that is for the 10 lessons, one lesson a week. There are also weekly pronunciation video lessons to help you work on some things like, like the schwa sound. There's a lesson about the schwa and we practice that. Um, classes are available Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All right, so uh, I will put a link right down here in the chat um, in case you wanna check that out. You have until May 2nd to sign up if you would like to speak with me um, and really work on your speaking skills right there. Boom. Okay. So I'll come back to this and, and remind you at, at the end, but I want to continue, um, with our pronunciation lesson. And I think it ties in because I, we do work on pronunciation in the speak up course. That's something that, uh, we try to work on this, uh, question. Okay. How many syllables does this word have? The word is humanitarian. And this is really kind of going back to the basics of pronunciation. This would probably be a question more for, I, I think, beginner intermediates because a syllable is talking about one unit of sound. And it's important to be able to look at a word and if you can break down the word into syllables, then that's just gonna help you pronounce the word correctly. So this is really focusing on more individual words when we're talking about syllables. So the word humanitarian, how many syllables do you think, uh, do you think this word has? What do you guys think? And then of course, uh, I will let you know. And then I wanna tell you, there's something else I wanna tell you about this. So we have some people, Chanika says six, Mary says five, Oleg six, Tessie five. Um, 
dev3. So again, you really would need one way to kind of determine how many syllables a word has. I do like the, the chin rule. You put your hand below there, you say the word, and however many times your chin would touch your hand, that's like one syllable. Humanitarian. Six syllables. The word humanitarian has six syllables. Uh, I think some of you got that. Excellent. Uh, good job. The one thing I wanted to show you about this, because I just showed you the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. This is the phonetic spelling. And either one, it's, it's the same thing. You're trying to basically show the pronunciation to someone. The difference is phonetic spelling, it's a way of spelling the words exactly like they sound. And when I do pronunciation lessons, sometimes I'll do both. Often I use phonetic spelling because I think, like I said, not some of you may not be familiar with the IPA symbols, but I think when you look at the phonetic spelling, you kind of get the idea because many of you are familiar with the English alphabet and pronouncing the different letters, A and the B makes the B sound. Um, and you can look at that and kind of sound it out. Human, where humanitarian, six, six syllables. And the stress is on that four syllable, that tear, humanitarian, humanitarian. So hopefully that's a good little tip if you want to know, just do the, the chin test. And however many times your chin touches your hand, that is one syllable. All right, let's look at the next one. And this is, this is something that's definitely um, more related to uh, my accent, my pronunciation from the United States. Which of these words am I pronouncing with the flap T? And if you don't know what the flap T is, I will tell you, don't worry about it. Um, but just to see if some of you know, which of these words am I pronouncing with the flap T? I'll say the words A, time, B, mountain, C, water, or D, pronunciation. <laughs> and the reason why I ask this question is because the flap T is really, it is something that is the, very common in the American accent. Um, and I say this all the time, uh, <laughs> and I'll show you some other words. So excellent, uh, good job, Oleg, Julio Cesar, um, Hiwa, Leo, uh, Mary, Black, uh, Tessie, nice. Uh, the correct answer is C, water. So just, I'll show you the next, I'll talk a little bit about that, but just to um, talk about these other ones like T, time, that would be like the true T sound, time, mountain, that is more of a, a stop T because it's like you're getting ready to say the T and then you're stopping right before mount, mountain. It's like your tongue is getting ready to hit the top of your mouth and say that T, but then you stop mountain. Water, that is the flap T sound. I'll talk about that in just a second. And pronunciation, that, that T sound, that T-I gets blended together and you get the sh, sh sound, pronunciation. But water, is a word that I would say with the flap T and what this is, it really sounds more like a, a soft D sound. And in general, not always, it, it comes between two vowels. So I gave you some examples like Italy, all right, between two vowels. Again, when I say the word, listen for that D sound, Italy or metal, metal has like a D. The other words, uh, they're not between two vowels, but sometimes you also hear it. This is when, when the T is followed by, I believe it's like a dark L, and words like little, little. Again, you hear that flap T. Or when an R comes before the T, 40, 40. And you're not really hearing a T sound. It's more like that soft D. The one thing that, again, to when you talk about speaking naturally, and this also happens not just within a word, but also between, like when you say phrases. So, I bought a car. 
In this case, the G, that GH, it's silent. So it's kind of, it's also that T is between two vowel sounds because that A, again, I'll say it with the schwa. That's another great way to reduce, uh, reduce your accent. So it's like between the ah and the uh sound. I bought a car. And I would say it with that D, that T at the end of bought. It sounds like if I were to say it just quickly and naturally, I bought a car. I bought a car. Yesterday I bought a car. But that's not true. I don't have a car. <laughs> Maybe someday I, um, I, I'll be able to say I bought a car and that's true. But I just wanted to give you another example of uh, how people would use the flap T when it's not, it doesn't have to be in the middle of a word. When you have like a phrase like this, I bought a car, people would pronounce it. So even, and I'm not saying that this is something that you guys have to do. It's good to be aware of because I think whether you, uh, you're somebody who wants to learn more about accents and pronunciation, I think many people like to watch TV shows, movies. So if anything, it's good for your comprehension. It's good to know. So the flap T, it is something that's very common in the United States, which is where I am from. So yes, this is something that's very specific to uh, like my, my English accent. The next question uh, that I have for you, I think uh, you guys probably would get this. Which of these words has a silent letter? And talk about uh, pronouncing silent letters, or actually these are letters uh, that you should not be saying. Which of these has a silent letter? I'm talking about a consonant too. Typically when, when you think about silent letters, you're overwhelmingly referring to consonants. You could have, there is like a silent E at the end of some words that's also very common. Um, but what about these words right here? Uh, it has a silent letter. I'll, uh, I'll say the words. Um, I thought maybe that'd make it a little too easy if I said the words, but A, hippopotamus, B, dictionary, C, television, or D, rendezvous. And all of you, excellent, uh, Chayanika, Adriana, Gokan, uh, Hulisir, Oleg, Lali, perfect. Um, rendezvous, Takayo, Angela, great job. Rendezvous is the word with the silent letter. I think before I did a lesson on advanced words with silent letters, this was one of them. And I chose this word because it has a silent Z. You don't really find many words that have a silent Z. Um, but at this, again, I think this is a borrowed word from French. Um, so you do not hear that Z sound uh, when somebody says rendezvous. Right here, I've given you both the phonetic spelling as well as the IPA so that you can see the difference. And again, I think it's, it's definitely, in my opinion, easy for everyone to kind of look at the phonetic spelling and try to sound it out, especially if you're not familiar with some of those symbols in the IPA. This is a very useful, um, this is something very useful to know. And I've done video lessons about this in the past, talking about the past tense of regular verbs, which are going to end with ED. So the past tense, of help is, well, I don't want to pronounce it for you, not yet, because I don't want to give the answer away. The, the ED is pronounced with uh, which sound? Is it pronounced that ED, the past tense, I'm talking about help, it's a regular verb. Is it that ED going to be pronounced with a T sound, T, or D, or an ID? And I've told you this is very useful because I think there are many regular verbs. Oftentimes you're having a conversation, you're talking about something in the past and you would use uh, this. So I got a, got a little bit more of uh, a mix in here. Yes, excellent. Uh, Ola, Oleg, Israel, uh, Sleepwalker, Helene, Takayo, Lolly, Silvio, Augusto Jr., welcome, good to see you. Um, good to see so many members and patrons, awesome. Leo, Mary, the answer is T, and the answer is A, the, which is that T, helped, helped. And I, this is the, the kind of the rule if you want to follow. So the ED and help, well, helped 
is pronounced with a T. So in general, there's three rules that you can follow. Pronounce the T if the final consonant sound is voiceless, which means that there's no, you, you wouldn't feel a vibration in your vocal cords. So help ends with the P, P, P. It's a voiceless sound. Helped, helped, like watched, watched, watched. I watched uh, a Netflix movie last night. True story. I watched the movie. I saw it was The Gentleman. Um, number two, pronounce it as D, a D, D, if the final consonant sound is voiced, like in played, Y, Y, the Y sound, you should feel that vibration in your vocal cords. Played, and you pronounce it as id, as a separate syllable, if the final consonant sound is T or D. Weighted, blended. And then you hear that. The reason why I said this is useful is because I think this is when learners will make just small mistakes because when you're having a conversation, you're, you're, you're just going to speak. And that's what you should do. You're not really going to be thinking about, well, wait, I'm getting ready to say this regular verb in the past tense. Is it a T or a D or an it? This is where I think it's just useful to get exposure to the language. It's useful to understand that there are rules that you can actually follow. And the more you listen to the language and then actually speak and say the words correctly, then you're just going to be able to do it naturally and effortlessly whenever you want to. Uh, people gave some more examples right there. Excellent, Helene. Needed. That's another good one with the ED. Um, Osmeli Wanted. To be honest, that's where I feel like I hear people make the most mistakes is that they're adding an id to a, a word where it should just be like a T or a D sound. And they're adding that extra syllable. I think that's often when I would hear somebody make a mistake. You still understand what people are talking about, but it is something that uh, you can e I could easily hear. So something to keep in mind. Uh, then the next question, I like to talk about minimal pairs, which is one reason, which is why I've given you this question. Which set of words is a minimal pair? All right, is it right, light, A? Is it B, profession, obsession? Or is it C, eight, eight? Which one of these is a minimal pair? I don't necessarily know if you've, if you've been in an English classroom, this is something you've probably heard of when we do the Speak Up course. The, in, in a lot of the speaking videos that I mentioned, the weekly speaking lesson, the pronunciation video lessons, uh, I'll talk about minimal pairs. And it's very, it's a great way to practice your pronunciation, but also great for your listening to really make sure you're able to identify sounds. And I hope I'm not giving it away. Wow. Okay. So most of you actually, uh, have gotten this incorrect. All right, so that's good. I told you it's not something you may have heard of before. Maybe you're just guessing, but yes, um, Andrea, you got it. Uh, who else said A? A is the correct answer. Um, Andrea, somebody else, Takayo, excellent. I think you know, Takayo uh, has been in the Speak Up course, so <laughs> I told you that's something that, that we talk about in Speak Up. Um, the answer is A, right and light. That is the minimal pair. Profession, obsession, That's those are just really rhyming words because they end in the, the same final sound. Eight and eight, that's a homonym. Uh, so I'm sure you may have be familiar with homonyms. These are words that, that sound the same. They have a different meaning. Eight and eight, they, they sound the same, different spelling, different meaning. That is a homonym. A is a minimal pair. And what a minimal pair is, it's words that are pronounced the same except for one sound. And that sound could come at the beginning of a word, like uh, right, light. It could come in the middle of a word. And that, that the R and the L, that's the minimal pair. And I said that people would practice this. So for example, when I, I used to teach English in Korea, and many of the Korean students would have some difficulty with the R and the L sound. And this would be a good way to practice. We'd practice with words, we'd practice with sentences, also really to make sure that they can identify if I were saying the word right 
with the R or light with the L. Sheep, ship, that's another minimal pair. The difference between the I and the E or fan, van, the F and the V. Uh, think, sink, another minimal pair. Coffee, copy, again, that's at the middle of the word. So the only difference is that one sound, and it could also be at the end of the word, bus, buzz, that S, Z, minimal pair. And I told you, I, I think this is very useful for really practicing if you are able to identify a sound that you have trouble with, and you know, oh, like I have trouble with the, the TH sound. And then you can practice that in relation with some other minimal pairs, because there are minimal pairs for so many different um, sounds out there. And it's a good way to practice for your speaking, but also very useful for your comprehension as well. You um, asked, do you speak Karel? Um, Nanun Hongugoro Chogomheo, Chogomheo. That's, uh, I speak very little Korean. Uh, my Korean is very basic. I used to speak, I, I would say maybe a long time ago, I was more of an intermediate speaker. Um, but now uh, it's been so long because I taught in Korea. Gosh, that was uh, about, oh, wow, about over 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Wow. Um, so this is a minimal pair. This is very useful for practicing your pronunciation. Again, something that we do in the, the Speak Up course. This is another, well, we'll, again, we'll walk into this. Which syllable is stressed? I'm talking about syllable stress now in the following word. I've highlighted the word for you. Um, it's a simple sentence. You can just say it to yourself right now if you want to, and then you can listen to me. But it's a two-syllable word. Of course, those are the only choices I've given you. Is the first syllable stressed or the second syllable? He's going to present at the conference. He's going to present at the conference. Which, uh, which of those syllables is stressed? And then I'm going to, well, I told you we'll kind of walk into this uh, slowly. So which syllable is stressed? It's a two-syllable word. Is it the first syllable or the second syllable? He's going to present at the conference. And excellent. Um, so yes, uh, Andrea, John, Julio, Ten, Kritika, Hadil, Takayo. The answer is B. It's the second syllable. He's going to present at the conference. I've given you, I've, I've bolded the, the stressed syllable, the second syllable. He's going to present at the conference. He's going to present at the conference. And it, it doesn't have to be as like a super so, strong stress. The reason why I'm giving you, because now my next question is, which syllable is stressed in this word right here? All right, it's the same word. But are we going to stress the same syllable, the second one, or are we going to stress the first syllable? It's a simple sentence. Practice saying it out loud. Think about the word. She got a lot of presents for her birthday. She got a lot of presents for her birthday. What do you guys think? The first syllable, the second syllable. Um, I think probably basically because I've kind of been <laughs> walking through this question, I'm guessing most of you can probably just tell what, uh, what the answer should be, even if you're a little unsure. The answer is A. It is the first syllable. Um, the first syllable is stressed. She, um, she got a lot of presents for her birthday. And I kind of wanted to go lead you into this pronunciation rule that in general, if you have a two syllable word, that's both a noun and a verb. And there are many words like that. Um, in general, you're going to stress the first syllable with nouns and the second syllable with the verbs. So I have given you like the noun present, the verb to present. So see if you can listen for them as I say these words. The noun object, an object, the verb to object, to object. And then the last one, um, the noun conduct, conduct like somebody's behavior, or the verb to conduct, to conduct. So hopefully, as I said those words, you can, you can listen for it and tell a difference because pronunciation, it's not 
it's not always just about speaking and saying these words correctly, but also your listening skills as well so that you're able to identify the words that people are saying. And like I mentioned before with uh, talking about the schwa and people like in the U.S. will overwhelmingly say t and they use they say to with the schwa sound t. I'm going to the doctor. I'm going to the mall. It's very useful for your listening comprehension so that you understand, oh, this is exactly what the, that person is talking about. Uh, all right, so I hope, I hope that you found uh, this useful. Again, I kind of just chose a few different things to talk to you guys, to share with you today um, about pronunciation. If you want to improve your pronunciation, again, you can check out uh, Check out the Speak Up course. It's getting ready to start next next week. All right, the first week of the first week of May. You have until May second to sign up. It's all about uh, getting you more and more speaking practice. We talk about a variety of topics. We do different speaking activities. There is a link in the description. It's all about helping you speak confidently, clearly, naturally. Enrollments open. Uh, these are. It's a ten week course. And it's for intermediate to advanced speakers. That's what I've been saying. Intermediate to advanced speakers. If you're interested and would like more information, just go uh, check out that link. I'll go ahead and throw it in the chat one more time, just for good measure. Um, but I appreciate you guys being here with me. Uh, oh yeah, don't remember, if you want to, you can use that voucher code, SPEAK10, get a 10% discount. Uh, Thank you guys sir, for being uh, here with me. I hope that you learned something new, especially maybe about um, my accent from the United States, the way I tend to pronounce things with that flap T sound. And I uh, just want to give some last uh, shout outs, Leonardo, Sleepwalker, Julio Cesar, Oleg, Hiwa, Leo, um, Andrea, Nayan, uh, Yasin, Ricardo. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, Todia, sorry if I couldn't get shout outs to everyone and try to get as many as I can while going through these lessons. Lolly, good to see you again. Uh, Takayo, Juliana, Francisco, <laughs> don't worry if you're late. It, I, you can watch the video on replay. I will do another lesson next Saturday, so I will be back then. Uh, I may do a little bit of a Q&A, so I will make an announcement um, about that shortly. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you next time. So long.